5.8 Analyzed Graphs of Polynomial Functions. And so this comic is pretty much saying, remember, if it had multiplicity 1, then it just meant that it crossed the axis. But if it had multiplicity, like we saw yesterday, of 2, then it just hit the axis. It just touched. Remember, every time it has even multiplicity, it touches. If it has odd multiplicity, it crosses. So that's the point of that comic. So now we're going to just do a really brief sketch based on the information that we have. The first piece of information that I see is that it is negative. The second piece of information that I want to look at is the degree. And what is the degree going to be? And this is going to give me an x squared is my biggest, so an x times an x squared is an x cubed. So because it's negative and odd, again, my simplest case is just that line, right? Because it's odd and negative. So I know that the end behavior is going to look like this. And then the third thing I know is that at x equals negative 2, it crosses the x-axis. And then the other piece of information I know is that at x equals 1, it touches the x-axis. And so I know that my zeros are at negative 2 and my other zero is at 1. And now where do I start? I know my end behavior goes like this. So I know I need to start somewhere up here and end somewhere down here. And so now I just pretty much connect the information that I know. Since I know that I'm starting over here, I'm going to cross here. And then I'm just going to touch here. And then I'm going to end up down here. And so since I crossed, I was over here. So it's got to hook back up somewhere. And then turn back down. Okay, so that's a really brief sketch. I didn't do any of these points formally. All I did was kind of sketch in, giving the information that I had. I used all the information possible, and I came up with a pretty good sketch. That's all I want you doing for these, not using your calculator or finding exact points, just a brief sketch. So the points that I made here were that it was negative, and I looked at the degree in order to determine the end behavior, so first determine the end behavior, and then determine the zeros and if they cross or touch. Now one more piece of vocabulary that I want to give you is just turning points. And turning points are found at the max or min. So this would be a turning point and this would be a turning point. And we will notice that a polynomial function of degree n has at most and I want to emphasize the most because it doesn't have to have exactly, but it has at most n minus 1 turning points. And that's because if it's a third degree, that means it looks like this. So this is a cubic function, okay? And so when it's a third degree, it can only have one max and one min, meaning two turning points. Think of the simplest case of y equals x squared. That looks like that. That only has one turning point. and 2 minus 1 is 1. Now think of a line. Simplest case would be y equals x. This has 0 turning points. Well, that's because 1, which is the degree here, minus 1 is just 0. And so the important part here is that the polynomial function of degree n has at most n minus 1 turning points. In this problem, we're going to graph f of x equals x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 and identify the x-intercepts and the points where the local maxes and mins occur. Okay, so in this problem, it is not factored down for me and I can't really factor it, so I'm going to have to use my calculator. So go get your calculator. So go ahead and y equals put your equation and then just graph it. 
Okay, and that looks like what we would have expected. We would have expected that the end behavior would have started up and ended up since it's positive and the degree is even. And so that's what we were expecting. Now when I graph this, a problem that I have is I can't really see what's going on over here. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit closer. I'm going to do zoom four. And now I can see much better that I have a min here, a max here, and now I can't see this min anymore. And so I'm gonna have to adjust my window out and in as I go and do this problem. The first thing I'm going to try and do is find the intercepts. So in order to do that, I am guessing that negative two is an intercept. So I'm gonna just check that with using my value and see if negative two is in fact an intercept, and it is. Then I'm going to use negative one, looks like an intercept also. It is also an intercept, and then positive one looks like an intercept. So let me just check that one out. And so write those three intercepts down. We have negative two, negative one, and one so far. Now I'm gonna go ahead and find my maximum, because there's only one maximum here, and I'm going to use the second calc, and then go to maximum for this. The way this works is use your left and right arrows to get as close to the point as possible. So the maximum looks right around there. When it asks you for left bound, you just press the left arrow once or maybe twice and press enter and then go to the point again, right bound, maybe press the right arrow twice and then guess, just go right in the middle. And so my maximum is, go ahead and write this down, negative 1.366 comma 0.348. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find this min right here. So I'm gonna do second calc min. And okay, so again, use the left and right arrows to go right to the point and then hit the left arrow to make sure you go a little bit to the left. The reason I'm doing two left arrows is just because I want to, like the step is so small here, I wanna make sure that I'm going to the left and to the right of the point, so that's why I'm hitting the arrow twice in these. And then guess is just smack in the center. And so my minimum is actually one of my zeros, that's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna have to go back to my standard zoom six window in order to get this other minimum. So sometimes you need to play with your window like I have to do in this problem. All right, so go to second calc and then go down to minimum. And again, go as close to your point as possible and press the left arrow. I'm pressing it twice here. Again, I just wanna make sure I'm to the left, right of the point, and then guess is just smack in the middle. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and draw this given the information that I have. So I need to make sure my zeros are at negative two, at negative one, and at positive one. And then I had a maximum right around here. And then this was actually one of my minimums. And then my other minimum was right around here. And so I'm gonna just do a real brief sketch of this. and it just touched there and went back up. And so you'll see that this is a fourth degree and it has actually three turning points. And that's good enough. And again, our X intercepts, we're at X equals negative two, negative one and one. Our local maximums we only had one of those, and that was at negative 1.366, and our local minimums, we had two of those, and that was at negative two zero, and at 0 0.366, negative 4.848. And so that's really all I have to do for that problem. Finally, you're making a rectangular box out of a 16 by 20 inch piece of cardboard. So we have this piece of cardboard and it is 16 by 20. 
The box will be formed by making square cuts. So you're going to take these square cuts out of the sides. So let's just say that they're x by x. And what you're going to do is, you see here, you're going to fold the box. And you'll just fold that up and you'll make a box top. If you're having a hard time visualizing this, take a piece of paper and cut out little square edges and then fold up those edges and you'll see that you get the box top. There just won't be anything left to fold over like that. Um, the ends will just glue right together. Now your goal is to make the box have the greatest volume possible. How long should you make the cuts? Well, let's think about it. This whole side was 20. So what's this dotted side length? Well, this was x and this was x. So this is just 20 minus 2x. This whole side length was 16. And so how long is this dotted side? Well, let's see, this was x and this is x. So this dotted side length here is just 16 minus 2x. So now I have all the information I need because the volume is just the area of the base, which is 20 minus 2x times 16 minus 2x times the height. In this case, this is going to be folded up, so the height is just going to be x. This height right here is going to be x. And this side here was our 20 minus 2x. And this side here was our 16 minus 2x. So I'm going to just foil this and let my x hang out for a second. So I get 320 minus 72x plus 4x squared. And now I'm going to multiply everything by x. I'm going to distribute that x. 320x minus 72x squared plus 4x cubed. And that's what my volume is. Again, your goal is to maximize this. So I want to find the maximum of this. So I have to go back to my calculator. And now I'm going to go in y equals, and I'm just going to type in, let me clear this out. Okay, so we're going to put in 320x minus 72x squared plus 4x cubed. And let's graph that. And whoa, I can't see anything that's going on, so I've got to change my window. Let's go ahead and make our x min 0. And the reason I'm doing that is because obviously that length can't be less than 0. And it would be a great exercise to think of the domain of this function. Um, let's look at it. What's the smallest x could possibly be? So in this one, if you set it equal to 0, we would get 2x equals 20 or x equals 10. And then this side, if you set it equal to 0, 2x equals 16 or x equals 8. So I guess 8 is the smallest thing x could possibly be because that would set that equal to 0. So it can't even be 8. Um, so I'm just going to make that my x max. My y, which is my volume, well, that can't be negative. And maybe it's getting huge. So I'm going to just make it 500 um, and try that out and see how it works. Oh, that looks pretty good. All right, so again, I didn't want to see the negative parts here because my volume can't be negative. And my y in this equation, since I put it in y equals, is just my volume. And so I want to maximize it, so I want to find that maximum right there. So I'm going to go to second calc, and I'm going to go to maximum. And I'll go right up to the point. And now I'm going to hit the left arrow a couple times because I want to make sure very clearly I go to the left of the point. And then that's about the point, so I'm going to go very clearly to the right of the point. Hit the right arrow a couple times. And then for the guess, just go right in between. And so that's my maximum point. And when I graphed it, I found that my maximum was 2.945 comma 420.11. Okay, so now in A, how long should you make the cuts? Well, the x would be 2.945 inches. 
So that's how long you should make the cuts. Um, what is the maximum volume? So the maximum volume is just this, because remember our Y was our volume. So 420.11 inches cubed, because volume is in units cubed, again, because we're doing length times width times height, that would be inches times inches times inches, which is inches cubed. And then it says, what is the dimensions of the finished box? So why don't we go ahead and round this just to make this easier, about three inches, about 420. And then let's just say that this side is 20 minus two times three, which is 20 minus six or 14. The other side is 16 minus two times three which is 16 minus six or 10. So our final box would be 14 inches by 10 inches by three inches. And that would be the answer to part C. And that's it for this lesson.